Now I'll request Dr. Jatinder Bali to talk to talk about methods of evaluation of SIA. Uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. At the outset, I want to thank uh, Dr. Naik sir, Dr. Boramani, Dr. Mathur, uh, Dr. Sahu, IASMS, ICS, and AIOS for giving me this opportunity to talk to you about statistical methods and. Uh, surgically induced astigmatism. The basic purpose of this talk, I have no financial disclosures to make for this. The basic purpose of this talk is to get us to start thinking about surgically induced astigmatism because no single method of uh, describing it is, is uh, complete in itself. Now, um, it was Thomas Young in 1801 who described astigmatism, who, who described as astigmatism. And the uh, toricity of any refractive surface of an optical system producing two principal foci delimit delimiting an area of intermediate focus is called the conoid of Sturm. So astigmatism can be regular, oblique, or irregular, and regular can be with the rule or against the rule. And then depending on how you're going to measure it, uh, you, can, you can use different methods. Now, uh, people have been talking of, of uh, their, their results. Always remember that when you're using uh, retinoscopy, it is more forgiving and your results are going to be slightly different compared to objective keratometry or topography. <coughs> now, the, the Javal's rule states that, uh, you know, the, with the rule astigmatism is better, uh, but we still don't really know whether it holds true for cataract extraction and intraocular lens implantation. Now, uh, in 1960s, Peters suggested that, you know, a certain degree of myopic astigmatism may be useful because what it does is it induces pseudo-accommodation in a pseudo patient. And then, you know, they, they calculated the amount of spherical error and the amount of cylinder, which is the optimum cylinder for that given spherical error. Uh, right at the bottom, you'll be able to see the, the calculations for that. Uh, it was Donders who first described the cataract uh, surgical, uh, the cataract incision astigmatism. And uh, it was Kravi. He said that, you know, it's like a hula hoop. You press one side, the, at 90 degrees to it, it extends. Now, that hula hoop is, is not just the hoop. The entire dome is going to have the same, same effect. So we had this, uh, uh, the, the law of the elastic domes which has been described by many people in many ways. So how do we go about, about uh, you know, calculating and evaluating statistically the, the surgically induced astigmatism? The most basic one was, you know, we used to do a simple subtraction analysis wherein we, we would, you know, j subtract the steepest from the flattest meridian. And uh, it had some pluses, it had some minuses, but then Subsequently, uh, once, uh, you know, the vector analysis came in, it, it became norm de groom and everybody started describing that. Polar analysis was, you know, uh, you, you place uh, 0 to 180 and then uh, the vertical ones are with the rule, the, the horizontal ones are against the rule. So uh, that, now, polar analysis to, vector analysis to be converted to polar analysis requires decomposition. I'll come to that now. So uh, different optical decomposition methods of, uh, of uh, the cylinder were described. Uh, the first one, of course, was Gartner, then it was Humphrey. And he said that, you know, you take it at 0, 090 and 45, 135. And uh, subsequently, Kravi gave his own rule, uh, the cos and sine methods. And uh, then we came to uh, Nasser's method. Nasser described three main methods. And uh, the first one was, uh, again, based on sine and cos. Then Kate, what he tried to do was, he tried to put one number to the astigmatism so that, you know, he could, you could, def you could compare different things. So he came up with, with uh, the concept of surgical accuracy, which measures the effectiveness of your surgery. And then, of course, uh, Nasser and Behrens came up with this 90, uh, he says you, you uh, decompose the vector into 90 degrees and 135 degrees, and then use vector analysis thereafter. What this allows you to do is use Fourier analysis and you will realize that it is not linear. It is, you know, a sine wave. It is a, a wave, it increases, it decreases. Now, this is important when we go in for uh, our statistical analysis. Now, uh, surgical vector is by very widespread. Uh, its its uh, adoption is very widespread. And uh, rather than describing an outcome, it describes the process. And I have Dr. Nayak here and... Uh, He's been my mentor, and uh, basically, why is the surgical vector analysis uh, a misnomer? Reason being that, you know, you have, you have uh, 
the vectors are measuring the same outcome over time. And what you are trying to do in that is, people have been describing serial t uh, series of t-tests, right? The curve joining the means may not be a good descriptor for that. And uh, it does not take into account the fact that measurements at different points from same subjects are not independent measures because t-test requires independent measures. And successive uh, uh, measurements are likely to be correlated. Now, <clears throat> so what this brings us to the fa is that, you know, we need to have some sort of a summary measure, like peak post-op astigmatism, final stabilized uh, post-op astigmatism, the rate of change in post-op astigmatism, and this gives you the numbers and counts. When you have the numbers and counts and percentages, that allows you to do a lot of statistical analysis. And then uh, uh, refraction consists of a sphere, cylinder, and axis. Again, that can be used to convert into one measure and make summary measures from there. And then we have all the optical uh, decomposition methods that we have already talk, talked of. And uh, statistical methods must take full and joint allowance of all the comp uh, components of refraction. And this can be achieved uh, best by by bivariate and multivariate methods. So I'll just take one. Uh, so nowadays, the main, main three approaches, one is uh, Hotelling's T-square statistics for uh, probabilistic analysis. It's a bivariate analysis. And then we have, you know, um, Harris suggesting uh, the power matrix using a W statistic with an F distribution. And then, of course, the summary measures that we've just described. With that, I come to the end of my presentation. Thank you so much, sir. Yeah, thank you, Dr. Jitendra. It is a huge topic to be just summed up in six minutes, so it probably it needs hours and hours to understand this topic.